In principle, everybody agrees that our AI system makes sense and our drilling makes sense. But in the end, they always ask, what have you found? We didn't have a solid direction on what could be there. The AI model highlighted gold and copper in Willow Glen as the elements that were most likely to be enriched there. So it was see what's there. When we first went out, we didn't see the gold that the model had initially picked up. Just because it pointed to gold, it didn't mean that there wasn't something else possibly there. We had tried drilling one direction, and there was a little bit of copper, but just not that much. So then we drilled the other way to say, okay, maybe it's going the, dipping the other direction. Oh, okay, we're like, try and fail, try and fail, try and fail. And then we got to our discovery hole. Oh, approaching uh, site. It's uh, pretty excited, a bit nervous. From a picture, it very much looked like Bolivia night. Let's have a look at the rocks. What's really cool about Mali is it's, it's very identifiable. And let's have a look at the core. So, to me, it looks like monodonite. It has the flaky uh, habit. It has a uh, bluish tint. It wasn't just, it's there. It was, it is there. Oh, yes. That is monodonite. That is definitely monodonite. It's a one in 200 chance of finding a good discovery, and we found it on our eighth go. This is truly molybdenum sulfide. Look at it. It's, it's gorgeous. And I don't think any of us were really expecting to hit as high grade as we actually did. That's what kind of blew us out of the water. And obviously my imposter syndrome just went away overnight. And it was a really fun moment to be there as well and see it for yourself. It was really exciting to come on board and trial out this tech that is not really accepted by the industry. To prove to the industry that what we're doing works. That we are going to be able to find more minerals in the future. <laughs> And I think it was such such a huge relief for Roman. He has like built up this company from the vision in his head, and this is the actual first time that he actually is able to say, hey, look, we're doing it. After this discovery, I could show them. This is what we found. So just leaving the office, heading out to Armadale with Steven Johnson from SRK, who's doing a, a project review for our molybdenum project. We realized that we needed some outside input to help kind of develop our understanding of the project. What are you finding? Uh, bit of molybdenum. Pretty strong hydrothermal system. Uh, multiple vein cross-cutting relationships, which are what you want to see when you're exploring for a porphyry system. When he came down to see the project, he was quite excited about it, so yeah. it was a positive sign. And this one, yeah, this one does have more as well. Yeah. That's what you want to see. Once you've intersected some large amount of metal in the ground, you have one point of reference of where that metal is. But you cannot really say whether that discovery is gonna become a mine. All you care about is whether it justifies further investment to drill out a resource. 100% in case of molybdenum, it does. We decided to go back out into the field and do some soils and more mapping. We need to drill out the area around that discovery to map out how much metal there is. We drilled a couple more drill holes, a couple being a kilometer away from the original drill hole source. We're trying to find the core of it, like where is the biggest buildup of metals. And we were expecting really great, really high results. The samples from the second drill hole into the Moy discovery have arrived. If we have Moy in that core, then the system is big. But if there's none, then we have to shut the project down. After the report from SRK, we were pretty confident we were going to find more things in this drill core. Wow, oh, shit. Steve was saying we should like look for increase in vein density. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> it's us as detectives figuring out, seeing new clues. You know, we're looking down the drill core and we can both tell that there's something going on. Holy, oh, how intense is that? 
And what we were seeing down the core was just this huge, you know, you know, 100 meter scale zones of rocks that have clearly enjoyed a lot of hydrothermal activity. And that is typically indicative of there being a metal deposit. I remember looking at the core and just seeing the molly right there. It was massive. There's more stuff in this hole than the other hole. Post discovery, it was further confirmation that we were onto something. In the meantime, we had drilled a couple more holes. I was cutting the core myself. I could see molybdenum there. As soon as we saw just the, like the pure textures of, of the drill core, we were like, okay, like I can't wait to see how high results we get. Because clearly with this amount of hydrothermal activity, you have to have some sort of metal deposit in there. Uh, we have Steven from SRK visiting us again, helping us interpret the results. We're hoping to see the ratio of copper to iron sulfides increase. Yes, and you're also seeing it, right? Didn't you see it? Yeah. Yeah, let's wait until we yeah. see. Cool. You know, before that was a big discovery. So we had high hopes. And you know, after weeks go by, we finally got results back. We were expecting just as high of values for Molly. But slowly as the results were coming in, we weren't seeing what we were expecting. Um, there's, they weren't what we were expecting. I'm looking at the drill core from Willow Glen and part of the same molly vein system that we saw in our discovery hole. Um, it's not as much. Usually when we get really good results back, Roman is calling you no matter what time it is. Um, but this time around, there was radio silence. This mineralized rock with a lot of sulfide content has been going since 300 meters down to now 500. It's been 200 meters of this very mineralized rock. I don't think we saw any moly. I think it's just primarily a potential for copper and zinc. Maybe it's just, just copper and rock. There wasn't enough copper and the moly has also diminished. I couldn't understand why. Now what? <laughs> um. Running a startup causes you to experience a lot of emotions, ups and downs, highs and lows. We get asked constantly, is this gonna be a mine? How big is it? How valuable it is? But when I make decisions about projects, I always keep a cool hat, like I never let my emotions dictate my decisions. We didn't actually see distinct mineralization within that drill core, but we knew we were tapping into a system at that point. I didn't think that objectively we have enough data to kill the project. Willow Glen was kind of put to the back burner while we had other projects going on and other exciting discoveries. During that time, we were still drilling Willow Glen. It was later on when finally we decided to outsource core cutting to another company that we shipped them pallets and pallets and pallets of, of core. And they, system, they went through all of it, and so slowly we'd start getting the, the assays back. Little did we know that there was going to be something in them that was going to change the direction of the project. There was gold. In fact, it was gold. That shifted everything at that point. <laughs> Seven veins of gold in a shallow part of the drill hole. We were not expecting this. This is incredible. Finding the gold, you know, that just added to the story, making it that much bigger. We used to have one discovery at Willow Glen. Now we have two discoveries in one project. And they're considered to be separate systems. It's very possible that we have tapped the first of many more deposits along that, that arc. It's one thing to make a discovery, but that discovery has to become... Hey, Moni. Um, what? Well, that's great news. That's awesome, man. Um, Dave, we got a term sheet from our investors. Yeah, man, uh, what are the terms? 